154th contact. Friday, December 4, 1981, 11.01 p.m. Quetzal says you obviously have an urgent matter once again, which is why I had to come so quickly. Billy says you can, indeed, say that, for once again, it just doesn't work with the night watch. Quetzal says this had to follow in such a way because as usual, Elsa doesn't hold to the provisions, if I'm not mistaken. Billy says you not mistaken because that is actually the main reason for the shifts starting again. But otherwise difficulties also arise because there just aren't enough people who could regularly take over this task. For this reason, I would like to make the proposal that in the future, only those living in the center perform this task, but in return, the rest fulfill their duty simply through additional monthly work. Quetzal says that idea can, indeed, be discussed, but concerning this, I would have another proposal to make stick to the arrangements established by me, but exchange Elsa for Roland, then the units remain the same. Billy says unfortunately, that just won't work because Roland has been working abroad for the last two months. Quetzal says of course, that is of correctness, I've overlooked that. There is but one solution to the problem Roland still takes over the duty of Elsa but at half task, while the other half will be completed by another group member. Billy says that's already happening because he carries out his watch as a half with Benedette. Quetzal says but my determination was Benedette and Cornelia together. Billy says but that didn't work, which is why a shift had to be made. Quetzal says then the solution can only be that all group members carry out the duty of the night watch in turn with Roland. There are nine group members living in the center who can carry out this duty. This means that every group member takes over a night watch, together with Roland, once every eighth week and that Roland performs an entire night watch in the ninth week, by what means a balance is achieved. Billy says you forget that Roland performs the night watch with Benedette. Quetzal says I'm a little confused of course, that is of correctness. Thus, my proposal applies to Cornelia. Billy says good, that will work, but what if she also goes to work abroad? How, then, would she be able to take over a whole watch? Quetzal says then the plan is to make it so that she can perform a whole watch on a Friday or Saturday. Billy says ah, of course, that works. Quetzal says the other group members, however, should still be incorporated into the duty of the night watch. But so that the plan doesn't fall into disarray at some other time, this duty should be fulfilled in each case in such a way that the regular watch participants are replaced, whereby the plan is further obeyed in such a way as if they had performed their watch. Billy says that's a good idea. It is even better than your first, so we'll stick with that. Thus, I can still bring up something else that occupies me and only concerns members of the Codex but not other human beings. This is an issue, over which I've been troubled for two days you recently told me that a member of the Codex goes so far in his determinations of his life for the next life that he even predetermines at what age he can count on finding his real and true life partner, and you said that this would be the case for Kay and her 25th year of age. However, the whole thing really only applies to human beings who are interconnected to the Codex, which will expire in the coming time, however, forcing all predeterminations to then be cancelled for further lives, as the same is true for the years of life to be made up when a life ends too soon. If the Codex is broken, then the clause for the Codex bearers also falls, if, consequently, no more making up takes place for years that weren't lived long enough. Since everything really only concerns members of the Codex, it all isn't the norm. Quetzal says that is all of correctness. But with respect to Kay, I explained to you that with her, the relevant and necessary vibrations have been disturbed by regularities, whereby a postponement of up to three years can already result, thus, she must count on the fact that her own destiny will first take effect when she is 28 years old. Thus, what you've written in the book Life and Death, 
that years not lived in a life must be made up in the next life, doesn't apply to human beings in general but only to those groups who have incorporated themselves into the Codex, which will become ineffective, dissolved, and cancelled in the near future, however, as a result of the fulfillment of certain values. Billy says I know. I've understood everything. As I have inferred from your words, in each case, every Codex-affiliated human being, already in the preceding life, determines for the next life the time or age from which he could possibly meet his life partner, who really is the right one. As Ask it already explained to me once before, this destiny command will be disturbed if the male or female Codex member doesn't hold to this determined time, so for example, if he or she, already before this determined point in time, enters into commitments that aren't according to destiny and that are, thus, wrong. Such commitments disturb destiny in its flow because they're usually wrongly based on emotions, and they also proceed from wrong thoughts, causing a mental disorder to appear, which displaces those necessary vibrations that should decisively attract the destined life partner, even if this one belongs to another race and is tens of thousands or millions of kilometers away and has no direct material, conscious knowledge of his partner. Nevertheless, the subconscious forms connect and find each other, so one partner will find the other with absolute certainty if the destiny vibrations of the psyche, which are sent out through the material as well as through the subconscious form and then received again, are functioning properly and aren't disturbed by false influences. But the danger of the disturbance or even the destruction of destiny vibrations is presently very large due to the wrong lifestyles and the wrong environmental influences associated with them and so on, but above all, due to the fact that the lack of knowledge of human beings in relation to the teaching and its impact, as well as to the causes and effects of thinking, of material consciousness, as well as of the workings of the subconscious and the determinations and the power of the psyche usually lets the human beings act wrongfully whereby they ignore their determinations and even destroy them in many cases. This usually leads to the fact that descendants who weren't determined are produced, who must grow up in one case without a father or in another case with a wrong father and a wrong mother, when an already false and not determined marriage is entered, or when, through another false and not determined marriage, they are brought up by a just as wrong foster father. This, then, is often the reason why such children are abused by their forced parents and are even killed, but in the very least cases, they simply find disdain or expulsion. The human beings of the earth them simply call such parents uncaring parents. But through the overall disregard of the provision for marriage, it also happens that many wrong and not determined marriages are entered, from which also many descendants originate who also aren't determined. These descendants then largely find no connection in their families, as well as not in the environment and in the society of their civilization. As I know, you designate these not determined descendants as descendants of overpopulation. These are human beings who are produced thoughtlessly and through falsehood and who become placed into the world and who, therefore, cannot find their way in the world within a natural framework. These, then, are those who operate illegally, who become terrorists and anarchists and who want to turn the world and the social order upside down with murder, mayhem and violence, or with sectarianism and fanaticism. And the more the human beings of the earth produce such not determined or unconsidered offspring and bring them into the world, the greater the number of human beings of overpopulation and, with it, the number of those who cry for murder, war, mayhem revenge, hatred, sectarianism, fanaticism, terrorism, and anarchism and who also manage it. Is that right? Quetzal says it surprises me no more. Billy says so then that's right. Okay, then it's also probably right that for males and females, two different basic values are given, but these values are also valid for hybrids of the respective race. Quetzal says I have nothing more to add, have you consulted the memory block? Billy says no. Quetzal says phenomenal. Billy says thank you, you are generous. Quetzal says truly, phenomenal. 
Billy says that's enough, then I'll now continue on for the white human beings of the earth and their hybrids, the following values are valid. Table 1. These are the basic values that stand as age years. In addition to these, in each case there still comes the basic numerical value of a Kabbalistic form, between 1 and 9, which arises from the birthday and the natal month in added up form to the base number. Thus, my list states that, for example, if a human being of the earth is born on March 16 and 3 16 and is female, at the age of 29 years, she will be at the determined age to find the right life partner, although, this may still take a shorter or longer time because the destiny vibrations first become fully effective at this age. Thus, it can take one or two or even several more years before the effect of the cause is sufficient. I come to this aforementioned result because 16 and 3 results in 10, therefore, the cardinal number 1 originates from it, which is then added to the basic value according to my mentioned basic value list, so to 28. And 28 plus 1 equals 29. Is this right now, my son? Table 2. Quetzal says if I didn't hear it with my own ears, I would have doubted it. Phenomenal. Down to the last detail, everything is of correctness. A further comment is unnecessary. Billy says thanks, you too kind, but at this moment, listen further. These calculations only have their correctness for the present number of humanity of 4.3 billion. For each additional increase of 500 million in the human beings of overpopulation, the basic value number increases by another two points, that is two years. But for every decrease of 500 million in the overpopulation, seen from today's 4.3 billion figure, the value decreases in each case by 0.5 so by half a year in each case. If only the normal planet conditioned population of 500 million, or more precisely 529 million, was on the earth, then all of the basic values would be about 4 points, that is 4 years, lower. Is that also right, now? Quetzal says I have nothing to add. Billy says you slowly become sparing. Quetzal says I feel ashamed because in order to grasp these matters, I needed some educational assistance. You, however, calculate these data from your own forces, which is embarrassing for me, however, as it was before with other calculations through your own initiative. Billy says that shouldn't be so, my friend, for you should know my mission and should also know that I cannot help but come back mobilized from stored knowledge and capabilities from many previous times and further educated with new cognitions. Quetzal says that is of correctness, nevertheless, it shames me. Without question, I know no envy, my dear friend, but shame is my own. Billy says you making a basic mistake, son you only see the earth worming me the earthling but I am not that, at least, not originally. Quetzal says nevertheless. Billy says you illogical. Think of Gabriel. Quetzal says that, you know my earlier personal origin. Billy says but of course, and also no one had to tell me this. I've known this since the time, when I first saw you. Quetzal says you really know how to keep a secret. Billy says I had no reason to talk about it, you former half-earthling. You are, nevertheless, just a little bit younger, even though you are now more knowledgeable in many things, while I take care of my knowledge and capabilities somewhat unilaterally and am trying to do my best there. Quetzal says truly, that is also so, you ran. I no longer feel ashamed at all. Thanks, brother. Billy says you not only have humor, but you're also sentimental, Halank Ange Mithuzala. Quetzal says that was then. Billy says of course, for we live in today, thus, I'm back on topic. I have here the data of values for the other earth human beings, if I may still read these aloud. Quetzal says so be it. Billy says very well for the yellow human beings the following applies, and by this, I mean the Japanese and Chinese as well as all other yellow-skinned human beings, it is also true for their hybrids. Table 3. 
Next follow the brown human beings to whom I also count Africans, Brazilians, Indians, and Islanders, etc. of all kinds. Table 4. Then follow the red human beings, so the pure Indians and their hybrids, but to whom the so-called wild Indians and jungle Indians are not counted, who fall among primitive peoples. Table 5. Besides those previously mentioned, however, there are still many various other kinds of human beings on the earth, who also have different skin colors, but within the context of the aforementioned. But these kinds of human beings are mostly primitive peoples, like pygmies, jungle Indians so-called indigenous people, like in Australia, New Guinea, and so on and so forth. If I had to calculate all their data, then I still wouldn't be finished with it today, which is why I was content to deal with the highest standing primitive peoples, whose data are as follows. Table 6. Especially among the primitive peoples, it is striking that the basic values are sometimes very low, which I have thought about. Thus, I've come to the conclusion that, Indeed, the average life expectancy of a type of human being must play an important role in this determination, but I haven't tested or calculated this. But maybe you can give me information about this? Quetzal says that he's actually so. The lower the life expectancy of a race to be calculated, the lower the basic values. That is, therefore, of correctness. Billy says then that's right. I still have another question, but which doesn't refer to these things but to smoking as Semyaza once told me, but so did you, smoking is a lot less dangerous than what is always maintained by anti-smoking organizations, etc. But Semyaza told me very specifically that these anti-smoking campaigns weren't driven because of and against smoking but rather to cover up far worse things. About this, I would gladly like to learn a little more from you, if you can give me information. For my part, I only know from Semyaza that scientists and even certain governments are behind these campaigns against smoking because they want to conceal their criminal machinations thereby, namely the contaminations of the atmosphere and landscape with different kinds of poisons and the like. But mainly, as Semyaza said, the various contaminations generate the largest percentage of all those cases of disease that are well known as cancer and that are attributed to smoking pleasure. Thus, the criminal contamination of the atmosphere and food, etc. is concealed by this, while these scourges among humanity are simply imputed to smoking alone. But all those are to blame for this great contamination who produce contaminated food and all sorts of substances or let such accumulate or escape even if these are only tiny amounts, such as radioactive waste or outfalls in hospitals or nuclear power plants, etc. The leaked radioactive radiation is held in the air and is whirled about, as it is also stored in all existing matter. Therefore, if a human being or some other living organism inhales such air, then he automatically arrives into the deadly pleasure of the radioactive radiation, which also has an incredibly strong carcinogenic effect. And how cancer has gained ground with the human beings of the Earth since the first atomic bomb explosion on Earth, this will be clear to each one who actually gets to the bottom of these things. Indeed, it's not that cancer was already on the rise before, rather, it only came about since human beings and all earthly life forms began to eat contaminated food, to live with contaminated substances and hazardous waste, and to breathe in radioactive air. Quetzal says that is of correctness, both your words about the concerns about food, nuclear use, and radioactivity, as well as the fact that criminal machinations are pursued in order to make smoking pleasure primarily responsible for humanity's scourge of cancer through the use of false propaganda. Smoking pleasure is truly only to blame for this epidemic to a lesser extent, and such has been the case for a long time because the actual damages of smoking are of a different nature, such as in the areas of nerve damage and the asthmatizing of the respiratory organs etc., as well as the impairment of blood circulation through deposits in the blood streams, etc. But all these phenomena of smoking pleasure are even lower, 
relatively seen, than the damages of the bodies and organs of human beings and their necessary physical developments, etc. by widespread vegetarianism as well as by the criminal pollutions and contaminations of foods and substances of vital importance of all kinds in the air, but also by release radial activity. Billy says then vegetarianism should be more harmful to human beings than an average amount of smoking? Quetzal says that is a very important correctness, but this shouldn't suggest that this means an animation for smoking pleasure. Smoking is harmful in every case, but often less harmful than other wrong actions and lifestyles. Billy says good, then still one last question in regards to the Legionnaire's disease that first appeared in America which has claimed so many human lives and which has also appeared in Switzerland, in St. Gallen, in the Canton Hospital. You told me some time ago that this disease originates in ventilation shafts or air conditioning shafts. In addition, you also said at that time that in America, the plague will appear again, but so far, I still haven't heard or read anything about this on TV or in the newspapers. Should this probably be concealed? Quetzal says that corresponds to the facts. Several cases of plague have already appeared in the USA, but these aren't largely publicized. Billy says is it the same kind of plague that also broke out again in the south of India some time ago and that, centuries ago, eradicated half the nations? Quetzal says yes, it concerns the same epidemic. If the earth human beings had been wiser at that time, then this epidemic couldn't have been so rampant. But today, like then, the reason for the transmission of the epidemic lies with the fault of human beings because the keeping of house pets in the human living spaces as well as the close physical contact with such animals are to blame for the transmission and spread of the plague epidemic. But with regard to the Legionnaire's disease, the following is to be said this also concerns an epidemic, but it doesn't come from the earth, for it was driven here as tiny particles from outer space, as it is written in Emmanuel's prophecy, which says that epidemics from the space above will fall to the earth. With the particles now driven here from space which caused the Legionnaire's epidemic, it concerns a germ, a bacterium that is very fond of living in a chemically and radioactively contaminated atmosphere and that spreads out in this. Nevertheless, it is bound to a very specific climate, whereby it cannot multiply and spread out in the warm sunshine or in very cold weather. Great heat kills it when it can't remain in running bloodstreams, but great cold freezes it, so it solidifies very quickly, but at a certain temperature, it awakens back to life. On the earth, the essential climate for this bacterium only prevails in air conditioning shafts, as you said. There, these deadly bacteria can live and multiply exceedingly, but they only become dangerous and deadly to human beings through a metamorphosis, through a transformation process that only comes about through the poisoned, polluted, and contaminated air. Once they have transformed themselves, they can then be driven through the air currents of the air conditioners, in order to arrive into the human living spaces, after they have become immune to greater heat influences. Once they arrive into the air of a living space of human beings, they become inhaled by the human beings, by what means the deadly bacteria arrive into the respiratory organs and into the lungs, in which the germs spread very quickly and cause deadly or at least life-threatening inflammations, after which the germs then transfer immediately into the bloodstreams and also pursue their work of destruction there. Here, again, the blame lies with those who are responsible for the fact that poisons and radioactivity arrive into the earthly atmosphere. But now, it would be time for me to say goodbye, and don't forget that on Monday or Tuesday, I need those details of Elizabeth, which I've asked you to get for me. Now, until we meet again, my friend. Billy says bye, until next week. The End